A bienvenue à Paris. Oh, we spared no expense for this show. Because today we're discussing Modern, our French deco furniture. And what better place than the City of Light? Ah, uh, we've seen all the great sights, Montmartre, the Eiffel Tower. And right here on the Champs-Élysées. So join us today on Furniture Avant. Ah, oh, a bientôt. They still like his movies in France? They gave him a medal. Him? Yeah. A medal? Well, we're really in Philadelphia, and we're outside of Modern, where we're going to take some, a look at some examples of French deco, or Modern furniture, as it's come to be called. And we're going to take a, a visit with the owner in just a bit. That's true. Now, Modern furniture took its name from, from... Les Exhibitions Internationales des Arts Décoratifs et Industriels Modern. You said that very well. I got the chapeau one. And what that translates to is the International Exp Exposition of Decorative Arts and Modern Industry that was held in Paris in 1925. The French designers took exotic veneers and inlays and combined them with geometric forms. And they took their cues from airplanes, from ocean liners, and what you had was the mechanized age having its first influence on furniture. Now, Modern crossed the Atlantic and yes, became, it did. Known, it crossed the Atlantic. became known as Art Deco in the United States. Slightly different, more plastics, tubular steel, chrome, and lacquer. Right. Cheaper. And it made it a lot more easily mass produced here in the States. And you can find examples of American Deco all across this great country of ours. But in here, country. you're going to see real uh, Modern furniture. So let's go meet the owner. If the Nightingale could sing like you. Hey, this picture doesn't look like you. Golden uh, Gate. Did, 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 did. Hey, Bob, hey, what the heck hey, are you doing the here? Furniture guys. Hey, what are you doing Bob, here? I own you? the place. You want to see place. you guys? We're yeah. trespassing, as usual. <laughs> Fabulous stuff here. Amazing. Thank you. And Keep going. And lovely. Oh, thank you. And That's lovely very like a song. First yeah. time I came in here, I had to wear sunglasses. Everything is so brightly polished. Let's take a look at some of the stuff. Kissing up to me nicely. Well, go ahead. Well, we got a piece yeah. over we here. We want some of it. Kind of a skyscraper effect. Right. The piece that, that you're looking at right now is a uh, Brazilian rosewood cabinet mm -hmm. that was made by the Majorelle Studios in 1927 mm -hmm. for a specific exhibit in uh, Paris. And there's a wonderful niche, uh, or, niche. or niche, the niche. niche or the niche. inlay. I have a niche uh, and a nephew. Uh, uh, there's a great niche which is in three different materials. One of them is a mother of pearl, which was a very commonly used material during this period. And there's a pear wood and also a mahogany. All and in it's all in, all in inlay. And back here, we saw something that I've never seen any kind of wood. In all my years of finishing and furniture, I've walked, many years. I walked past it. And I said, no, Jack, never, I've never seen a wood like that. Now, it's a very unusual and exotic wood called palm wood. Palm, palm wood. wood comes from a palm tree and is a very hard wood because there's so much silica in the wood itself. And when they saw it, when it goes to be cut for veneers, mm -hmm. the blades wear down so quickly that they have to replace them frequently, and it becomes a very expensive wood mm -hmm. to use. Therefore, it wasn't too commonly often. It is very exotic and unusual. All of this furniture, when I came in, I looked at it. It was so brightly polished, I had to wear sunglasses the first time. Yeah, but all And it all looks nice. nice. You got nice. anything like uh, that needs well, some repair? What you see down here, do. I understand. It, and down here, what you see is what we've already right. repaired or has been done already by somebody. It's been restored, refinished. Mm -hmm. However, upstairs we have two more floors. Um, to your great surprise, two more floors. Wow. Two more floors. We didn't go there earlier and, uh, and figure it all which, out. No. Which, which, since you've never seen that before, Not I'd us. be glad to take you up and have you look Let's at it. Do if there's that. something we can fix, something you don't care too much about. Uh, there's nothing I don't care too much about. But if you'll do it for free and I get to oh, watch yeah. over you, yeah. then it's okay. Okay. It's okay. 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 I make a hundred a week. Let's, Let's go. go. Let's go up here. This way. Right? This way. This way. Right. Over here. Now we're talking about an accident here. This is more like it. This or does, less like it. This doesn't look, it looks much worse than it actually mm -hmm. is. But a lot right of this, down is to just it. Surface. this is surface scratches that once sure. you strip it, which is the first step in, in finishing a piece like this, you strip that first layer off. And that will take care of removing most of what you see, which are scratches in the, in the old shellac or sure. lacquer. Well, Bob Abel, this is your lucky day. I think if you strip this for us, we can take it up uh, the rest of the way. 
You we can, can do I that. have to strip it for you. You do and that. You can yeah. take it up the rest of the way. Exactly. I've That's seen right. your show. You sure you can do that? Well, let's make a oh, deal. Yeah. Uh, but wait. We're to try. But wait, there's more. There's more? Look, a lovely what? piece of upholstered furniture that we will also do for you. Where did that no come from? Wow. Uh, well, Leon, gonna, I think. We're going to put a piece of tape on the top. I see you're going to do one arm or just tape the center there for me? Just a piece of tape right here. This is negotiating. No. We'll take, we'll do some spring repair if it needs it. We'll do the padding. We'll put on a lovely wraparound one piece outside back we'll give you a regular cording you pick out the fabric sounds good to me just Very much. you know Such a nice look. do it right you know we will do it that's right, right. Yeah, you know, i mean what show right. you i don't know if i you trust know. you guys so you know, yeah well that's the problem i've been Wait watching a there's I mean, a couple dance in here that you well, can no, i worries me letting you guys you work can, on this because you guys start messing and you put a little parmesan that's not really a pizza entree vous si vous play what do you got there we've got the table and chair back at our faux shop here and i i already have applied some of the the lovely orange remover. Yes, it smells good. And it's doing the trick. It's taking the old finish off. Yeah, you picked just the top to do because it was the most damaged. Well, this has the most dramatic uh, results, too. You'll see the full wide volume here. The wide. And you're going to take roundness. that and you're going to work on that and we're going to jump back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Oh, I'm going to be thrilled because it's going to get make my kundalini stand on end. I'm going to take my chair over to my table and place it over here. And first, just a quick run through. Um, there's the four basic tools you need when you're going to be uh, stripping a chair. You've got a, a tack puller here, a claw, which will get the very stubborn staples out, the needle nose pliers, and of course the hickory mallet to hit yourself over the head because who wants to do all of this stuff? Then we've got a cup that we're going to put the, the tacks in and we just take them out. Now these have already been antiqued by the passage of time. So you wanna, you wanna, you wanna? Sure. You wanna keep them and don't break off the shaft unless, of course, it breaks off because you might wanna save it or sell it to a dealer. And on and on. And while I do this, I think about a gentler time and a lovelier place. Move is around, I'm pushing the old finish around, and it's ready to come off. I know it is because I can tell because I'm a professional. Here's a pair of gloves. I'm gonna wear these gloves. Wait, first, oh gosh, don't ever forget this. You know, these chips that I'm using are cedar chips, and if I don't wear this mask, I'm gonna smell like a closet. Here we go. Gloves on, and we'll take the chips, and we're just gonna pick up a couple handfuls. And once again, do the same motion as we always do. Wait a minute. Somebody put tape under there. That was for glare. Oh, it's a pretty top. Look, it's pretty mahogany. Nice, solid piece of mahogany. Got a couple little defects in it, but I don't think that'll show up after the wood is and finished. Looks so nice, it looks so fine. Now I gotta wash it. I gotta wash it with some alcohol and some lacquer thinner. And I got that right here. Take a steel wool pad and we'll wash it. Can you see how pretty that wood is? Look. Thank you, pretty. You may hear some weird sounds on the other side. It's Ed making every effort he can to get into this scene. Now I'm going to dry this off again with the chips again. Now, you know, the French, the way they devised this finish was to make the finish, the end result, look like glass. So what we have to do is stain this wood and then fill it using a paste wood filler and then stain it again, maybe, and then seal it. 
but it looks pretty. And the final outcome, you can shave in it. This is a final wash. It's kind of like a paint thinner base. And it's put out by the people who make the stripper. Here we go. This is, as I said, the final wash. It comes out in the final wash. And paper towels I like to use because they don't leave lint behind. So. All finished and ready to go. Now go see Ed. Uh, welcome back to Upholstery Central. And I'm very happy. Why? Because something's going right for once. I just took off this cardboard piece that conforms to the shape of the chair and defines the shape of the fabric. Here's the outside back, which I've already taken off carefully. This is my cowl for when I fight crime at night as Deco Man. We're going to cut the new fabric to this shape. And why am I also happy? Because I have found that because this was made uh, in the modern style, and modern style had a lot to do with uh, modularity and physics. We have a modular chair. We actually have the arms screwed into the backs by way of bolts, and then they're screwed into the base by way of a bolt around the front there. And as I pull this around, you will see so lovely, I have loosened the bolts over here, and it's coming right off. And because of the mechanized age, which defined Modern and Deco, they used to do this in one part of the factory, and somebody else used to manufacture another arm, and that's just how I'm going to do it. Look at all this bent wood in there. That's really, really nice. Hey! So now I'm just going to strip the arm, and then I'm going to go hit the Italian. Oh, just finishing up sanding. Don't, these orange gloves, they don't go with the shirt, though, I don't think. This is the stain. It's an alcohol-based, uh, ultra-penetrating stain. And, of course, I've emptied it into a little jar so I didn't have to lug around the whole gallon bottle. Just going to pour a little bit on. And we got... We have stain. We now have stain. Get rid of the wet one right there. Take the dry and evenly, and with the grain, wipe the stain. That's it. Hmm. Les exploded chaise franchise. Hey, look, we took the chair apart. We took it down to the springs. I'm not replacing the springs. Why? They're fine, and I'm not getting paid for that. So, first thing we do is we clean the legs down with a bit of Nopfa. And if you're not me, you better not inhale this. But me, I'm just thinking about all those great concerts. If you've got a stubborn stain, that's what steel wool is for. Or else, King Todd, Batman! Okay? I'll do it on that, but they don't want me to right now. Anyway, do I have to clean this? No, because that's under the fabric. Now. We go to the oil, the alcohol-based stain, which is the same stain that Joe did the top on. And I will rub this stain on very quickly. I'll get a little more for the front. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, a lovely red color it imparts. Get those edges to the bottoms. Nah. Hey, back here, you can say inspected by Fifi. So it's, it's made in France. <laughs> oh, boy. you're ready for that a real exciting part here. Uh, the stain is dry and we have to fill because, you know, the look of the modern finish of the modern was that a, like sleek glass. And because mahogany's got little tiny pores, we want to fill that. 
You could fill it with lots of coats of lacquer or varnish, but if you use the uh, paste wood filler that I'm using here, you can get away with less coats. This is the filler out of the can. See, it's kind of lumpy, and it's like this. And I put it in this little paint tray, added a little bit of naphtha, and smoothed it out to the consistency of like uh, chocolate syrup, I guess. And this has been dry. Now I'm going to paint this across the grain. And what this does is it will soak down into the wood, into the very pores of the wood. Sounds very dramatic, doesn't it? The very pores of the wood. And it will dry, kind of a flat color, and then you wipe off all of the excess. Grain is running this way, and I am brushing perpendicular to that grain. Now you might see this here. What is this? It's not underarm hair. This is the old horse hair that we removed out of a chair. And I'm going to use this to remove the, the wood filler. Because it is rough and it is an abrasive. So now we've got to remove off the excess. I've got most of it off. I'm using the horse hair. And you can see this one has got badly clogged. And you just rub across the grain. Why isn't the table moving? Got some masking tape underneath holding it down. The final patch. And now all the remover is gone. I mean, all of the uh, filler is gone. Oh, here we are. Oh, I'm just getting the booth ready for you. You know, I had to, that filler's got to dry overnight. So yeah, this so gives you may us as a well chance come and do this. Uh, to spray the legs here because Ed's got to upholster. And you always finish the, the wood before you right. do the upholstery. Now, this is a collapsible spray booth that we've made with birch and some uh, plastic and it's got piano hinges it collapses it folds up it's got a nice, neat little handle yeah. on it too sure if you're going to carry something this big now we're not advocating that everybody build a spray booth as a matter of fact nobody should build a spray be booth because if you live in a little section like south philadelphia where i grew up in a little row home you know in a residential neighborhood you don't want to start spraying in your basement you'll blow the whole street yeah, up. yeah that's dangerous oh but just with plastic explosives that's they used okay. to if blow you, up the street. If you have a commercial building and you want to spray, yeah. then you could build a real big spray booth and you go to your city hall and get all the licenses and be legal and all of that. But here, we have a shop. It's vented. Everything is cool. So We don't have a shop. You'll watch us now. Well, we're supposed to have a shop. Anyway, this, if you're going to spray, wait, you must use the removable filters in here. Looks like skull, doesn't it? But you put it in here and you got to use a mask. Joe's even got a full face this one. Is, this is my mask. I told uh, him to get a full face mask. This mask has served me well. Many jobs. All right, let's go. Let's fill up the, the bank. First, I'm going to open up my spray gun. This is a regulation spray gun. I'll pour in the lacquer. Just a little bit, because it's not a big chair. What kind of lacquer? Clear? It's clear, clear gloss lacquer. A little bit of lacquer thinner, just to thin. Put the top on. And of course, we have a compressor. Lock that you don't see with a hose. Now I will put on my mask. And I shall put on mine's. And I'm going to spray legs inside and then go around. And you'll see all this to music. It'll be uh, wonderful. And uh, allow us to do the I dance so. of the praying mantises. Now I will lock the gun in. What? There's a spring lock but right onto the nipple. No, no remarks. I'm not saying a word. And now it's anchored in. Let's go. And this, of course, has an exhaust fan. <laughs> You might want to set up a lazy Susan here. Exactly. But since we don't have one or we forgot one, we're just turning it. But it's okay because we're not shooting the top anyway, so there's a good place to hold. All the lacquer is dry, so now it's time to do the really fun part, the padding. We've stretched the burlap over the springs to hold them down and stapled all around the side with this here. Now, the old sandwich was made up of a layer of cotton batting and the horse hair and more cotton batting. I say free the horses. I've got a foam pony myself, and there's a piece of foam which I trimmed on the bias. 
with the electric carving knife. No need to see that again. And I'm going to put the layer of cotton batting on the top. Now to pad the side, there's your old pad, your cotton batting, and the new pad, it looks just about the same way, and that's all you need to do, and then it's just ready to lie down on. But what's going to hold all this in? You guessed it, muslin. Oh, the ubiquitous. Oh, the fabulous. So then we're just going to pull it down and tack it in at all four corners. I think I'll flip it up like this and just put one tack in here. We'll be able to trim that off later. And then I'll flip it over like this, being careful not to break anything. Break anything. Break anything. I'll pull it over like this. Just pull the front tight and put one in there. Now you want some tension because that's what's going to hold everything in. OK, now start working around. Got a pleat, no matter. Look, it's all going to come out in the wash. Next time, we'll apply a sanding sealer and several coats of lacquer to this table, and we'll finish up with a good buffing and a polishing. Oh, I can't wait. And we'll get to upholstering this yard char. You know, I can't wait uh, because I want to see this back done. And uh, we'll have a guest who tell us about polishing the French. No, that's French polishing, and he'll be demonstrating it as well. Oh, so goodbye. And be nice to your furniture. Let's get us out of here, mon frere. Um.